few miles south of Chamal Barrens, an uncommon lakeside barrier dune system stretches 17 miles along Lake Ontario's eastern shoreline. These dunes are home to rare Champlain beach grass, another remnant of the ice era. Behind that you'll see this, the big dune back there. Um, Champlain beach grass occurs here, here, along the St. Lawrence River shoreline and along the shores of Lake Champlain. Geologists have only one explanation. Toward the end of the last ice age, an inland lake or sea blocked by the retreating ice walls connected this area with now landlocked Lake Champlain via the St. Lawrence River Valley. Conservationists working to stabilize these dunes introduced Cape beach grass, a variety found on the Atlantic coast before they realized it may pose a threat to the native Champlain beach grass by crowding it out of its native habitat. Each plant and animal species is bound by its nature to a particular method of moving from place to place. Beach grass, while its feather light seeds can and do travel long distances on seasonal winds, grows under complex soil conditions that occur almost exclusively on beaches and along sandy river shorelines. Some plants rely on insects or animals to carry their seeds along, even bury them in order to expand their ranges. This bull thistle relies on songbirds to release airborne seeds from pouches beneath its flower heads. While foraging for seeds, this goldfinch releases many more than it consumes, and each sets sail for parts unknown. Where they find just the right combination of weather patterns, soil conditions, and sunlight, some will find fertile ground and take root. Scientists have pieced together a succession of plants and animals that became established in this region, one following another when the glaciers moved on. The first forests were composed of mostly black spruce and jack pine, no strangers to Arctic-like environments. These species are capable of surviving in temperatures to 40 below zero Fahrenheit and colder. In regions where temperatures are so low that black spruce trees are unable to produce seeds, that species has adapted by cloning itself as a way to spread its range. Each cloned stem emerges from a process called layering, in which all related individual trees are genetically identical. Such forests occur in frigid corners of the world well beyond the northern limits of seed-borne black spruce and other Arctic region tree species. Some modern-day individual trees formed from cloning are thought to be up to 5,000 years old, putting them within range of the Laurentide retreat. Another tree with ancient ancestry that thrived at the edge of glaciers is the American white cedar, a familiar resident of the limestone pavement Alvar system at Chameau, and a predictable species along lake shores and at the edges of ponds and wetlands with links to the Ice Age. Stumbling upon a stand of cedars in the wild is a reliable sign that some mysterious Ice Age wonder has survived and may be right underfoot.